So today's video is gonna be a bit of a cautionary tale. Uh, when I came up with this idea, Originally, it was to show you basically how to take care of your guitars through the different seasons and how to address common problems that come up with acoustic and electric guitars through the wintertime and summertime and how to fix them. See, right now in Georgia, it's the middle of winter, it's February, it's cold and dreary, and the air, especially in our homes, are super dry because we're using a lot of heat. And uh, this is my first winter in this house. And as a result, I haven't done a great job of keeping this space at the proper temperature and humidity, and my guitars have suffered. Now, originally I thought the issues were relatively minor, like on my Solus here, it needed a neck adjustment and fixing some fret sprout. But when I went to Righteous Guitars to shoot the video yesterday, uh, we ended up discovering a bit more serious issue with my acoustic that I didn't know I had. I think you might have a loose brace, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, why do I have a loose brace, Ben? Go ahead and tell the world. Well, because you didn't humidify your guitars properly. <laughs> god, this is so embarrassing. Sharp front ends on your guitar. Dude. It's bracing. Oh, that's brilliant. You know how hard I'm gonna get judged? Yep. On the comments for this. <laughs> so today's video is actually gonna be more of a cautionary tale and a lesson. Don't do what I did. Don't neglect your guitars because as I found out, it's uh, gonna cost you way more money in the long run. So before we jump over to Righteous and get these guitars back up and running, I've done an extended cut of this video for the Inner Circle. The Inner Circle is a private community for people that want to join in and help support this channel for 10 bucks a month. Over there, you're getting extra content, behind the scenes content, as well as access to monthly Zoom hangs that we do over there. I've done behind the scenes content on my live streaming rig and some ins and outs of how my studio works here. If you want more information on that, link is down below. So let's head over to Righteous Guitars and uh, meet up with my friend Ben Calhoun and see if we can get these guitars up and running. Okay, so I brought two of my guitars down here to Righteous, uh, my Novo Solus and my Miris. Both of them have unbound necks on them. They're both suffering pretty hard from fret sprout right now. So Ben's gonna take a look at them and we're gonna go through some of the common things that happen when your guitars dry out, uh, when the seasons change. We're gonna teach you how to look for them, how to fix them, things you can fix yourself and things that you should probably bring in and have a professional do. So he's just wrapping up with a few people right now and we're gonna pull these guitars out and get to work. All right, so the Solus, mm -hmm. uh, it's gotten a little better since I got the humidification right in the room, but this was like gonna cut you. The frets were so bad. Yeah. And the neck is super bowed right now. Well, we had pretty drastic season changes lately. So. The thing that I've noticed is the room that my studio is in currently, the temperature swings over the day are huge. So until I can get the basement studio done where it's more stable, I think I'm gonna be fighting this. It is easy to remedy, but it's also easier to prevent. Yeah. So, so we, prevention, Yeah. What do, you, uh, what do you recommend to prevent so, this kind of thing? Yeah, so one of the things that guitars in particular don't like is, is big swings and dry or wet environments. So of course this is dry. So usually what, what I would recommend, like if, if you have a music room like you do or like I do, a lot of people like to hang their guitars on the wall. If you're gonna do that, you can get a, a hygrometer, you can get one on Amazon, 70 bucks. Right, make sure it's calibrated. A lot of them now are, you don't have to do anything fancy, but you take that and put it in the furthest corner away from any openings, like your doors, windows, all that. Put it over there and watch it, right? You wanna be around 45%. You can go, you can swing, you know, a little bit either way. So put it in the far, far corner of your room and then just get a humidifier. Go to Walmart, get a humidifier. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Watch it, if it's too dry, turn it on. Now, if you're getting too wet, you'll have other problems that will arise and they'll really become, all these issues are really way more apparent on acoustics. Yeah. You'll feel this, but it's already been shrinking for a while by the time you feel that. Right. On an acoustic, you usually will notice the action gets lower. <laughs> yeah. Right? And then you start noticing other things. It's a little more fuzzy than it used to be. If you look at an acoustic from the side, it shouldn't look like your Novo. Yeah. It shouldn't be flat. You know, it should have a little, little arch to it. So you'll notice it flattening out. And ultimately what will happen and this time of year for us is, is that time of year where we repair cracks mm -hmm. all the time and loose braces. Because that wood's gonna shrink, and as it shrinks, the braces inside aren't gonna go at the same rate. Yeah. And it's gonna cause cracking or braces popping loose. And if you ever have a guitar that has a weird phantom rattle that's an acoustic and you do this. <laughs> I think you might have a loose brace, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> 
there's your loose brace. Yeah. yeah. If you do uh, monitor your humidity and try to keep it around 45%, you'll not have those problems. You know, and you won't have fret sprout. You won't have any of those things. So, so what's important to understand is some of these things are easy to fix yourself, like adjusting the neck, adjusting the intonation, but other things like what Ben's about to do to my solace, you probably should have a professional do, a luthier, your local shop, someone you trust. When it comes to filing down your fret ends, anytime you're filing something on a guitar, at least for me, I don't trust myself to do a good job, so I take it to a professional, especially on one of my main guitars, like my Novos. So Ben's gonna take a look at the Solus here and walk through some things that you can do at home yourself to keep your guitars in good shape. What's the first thing you're gonna do here? Well, uh, the first thing, you mentioned your neck was feeling a little wonky, and uh, it's real apparent that your action is crazy high. So we know these probably didn't move. Right. It's unlikely. Uh, what's more likely is that as the season has shifted, the neck has moved, right? And that's okay. It's wood. So if we look at your action, um, <laughs> you're considerably higher than what I know you like. As a matter of fact, this is bordering on almost unplayable for what I would consider unplayable. It's not fun to play. Yeah. <laughs> now you start hearing some phantom buzzy. So what's happening, without even looking at the neck, I know that your truss rod needs to be tightened. And what that's gonna do, your truss rod counteracts the tension of the string, right? So if you have a, a string pulling the neck this way, when you tighten the truss rod, it's actually gonna pull the neck straight, right? If you loosen it, it's gonna allow it to have bow. So you have more bow than you need right now, so we need to tighten your truss rod. And look, there's, we have measurements we use, but. A really easy way to do it is to just fret first and 12th fret, right? You think about that string is going to make a straight line between those two points. Right. So if I tap it, I can see how much relief, which is the curvature of the neck, you have, right? That's an easy way to measure. And that's more relief than we want. Uh, when I was growing up, kind of getting into this, I was told like somewhere around a business card. Where it really is, um, if you want to get geeky about it, somewhere around five thousandths of an inch of relief between the bottom of the string and the top of the sixth fret would make this playable and play really well. Always make sure you use a wrench that fits um, and not kind of, like it needs to be the right wrench because you strip the truss rod out really easily. And if you're not comfortable adjusting your guitar, you shouldn't. Um, don't want to mess anything up. It's not really something to be afraid of. But when you adjust a neck, if you feel a lot of resistance when you're trying to turn that truss rod, don't do it. Take it somewhere. Uh, it may just be stuck, but people do break truss rods. It's kind of hard to do, but people do it. So it's a screw. With that being said, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So I'm gonna tighten the truss rod. And then I'm gonna give the neck a little flex. Pop these strings back over. Check relief again, still too much. Now, I don't know if you can see this, uh, but the action is now much better. It's in a place we would probably call acceptable. So it's probably about 5 64ths. It's exactly 5 64ths of an inch. And probably around four over here, right on four. So now we're getting into the point where uh, probably want to take this into a professional, the fret sprout thing. So yeah. what is fret sprout for okay. the uninitiated? So, on a guitar, when it gets dry, the fingerboard may shrink, the wood may actually shrink, the metal will not. And when that happens, the tang of the fret, which is this little piece here, you can actually hear me hitting it. That, it's not shrinking, so it pokes out. It's sharp now. Not all of them will do it. You won't see it on Gibsons or bound neck guitars that cover the fret ends. But when it does, you only have two real options. <laughs> One of them you can absolutely do yourself. There's two versions of this, uh, and these are humidity uh, regulations. You can put these in your case, and these were made for originally by, for cigar humidors. And what it does is it has a two-way packet that will absorb moisture or release moisture, but it keeps it right around 45%. The Restore Pack emits moisture to a much higher level, so it's gonna go, I don't think it's 70 or 80% moisture. So the first thing you would do before you take this into somebody Get yourself a restore pack, 
put it in its case with those restore packs and re let the guitar reacclimate and hydrate. It's possible it'll pop back out and then, hey, you're on your way. Which has happened with this guitar about a week ago before I got a second humidifier in my room. Yeah. This was so sharp, it was like gonna cut your fingers basically. Yep. So it's come back a little bit, but it hasn't come back to normal. So if you get to the point of, I gotta get my fret tangs filed, um, you definitely, don't want to do that yourself unless you're pretty confident in your abilities. Uh, actually, fret work in general, I'd say, is it's that one area where you really don't want to mess up. So this is where people, you can really make a mistake. If you're doing this, you can hear it, right, hitting metal? Yeah. If you're doing this and you slip and go across the frets, you're going to tear your frets to pieces and have to completely re-level and crown it. So I put that on there, check my depth, I'm good. And then I'm just gonna literally do this. Nice and smooth. And then you just check, right? You're just kind of looking to see. We're taking off tiny amounts. And we're just trying to feel when that tang is gone. It's not gonna take much. So this, this file does quick work. Okay, you want to feel it? So, so just feel the tang now. Oh yeah. See, I was I was able to, remember I was going clink, clink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just like four or five passes with it too. Yeah, well the file's really aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a little bit down here yeah. still, but up here. And then you're looking, look at the tang though. Right. What yeah. you feel now is the top of the fret. Remember I was talking now there's two Oh, right, pieces. right, right, yeah, yeah. So we'll dress that down. Okay. But yeah, so now we just want to go back and shape the ends a little bit and you'll be rocking. And why are you taking the neck off? So I can't get my file down here. Yeah. Well, I can, but I'm making it easier on myself. Right. Because otherwise you'd have to like really protect the top of the guitar. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd be afraid I'd scratch it. See, the thing is it's scratched, but every scratch is intentional and in its right place. And we don't want to go well, add everyone's any other... a memory too, yeah, right? Exactly. You know. It's memory it's... of when I bought it like this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna go through and just do this. Just... What is that? It's a crowning file. Right. So it's a diamond crowning file. Just smoothing out what I did just now. Again, just barely touching it. And I'm skipping the middle. I'm not hitting right. the middle of the fret. So I'm rocking over that like that. Oh, yeah. Dude. What's weird is the last time I Yeah, they look like little BBs. Yeah. Whoa. And I now it should feel it. good too. And I put, you you know, know, new oh yeah, it's much more rounded. Yeah, and you can feel it. Yeah, it I started good. getting that. That's weird, way better. Yeah. Like on the high string, I started getting so, but that can all be avoided if you humidify your guitar properly. You Which I didn't do. Finger, <laughs> it happens. I just feel like the consequences, especially on a guitar like this, the consequences are high. Yeah, so we get a lot of repairs in here, at Righteous, that are have been repaired and are now coming to us because the repair didn't go well. Yeah. And man, you would not believe some of the nightmares that I've seen. You know, it's just fret work, nut work, and fret work are two areas where you just don't cheap out. Yeah. Because you really want somebody doing a good job for you. Yeah. Because that makes all the difference. Right. So we'll let's string this thing up and uh, cool. check it out and see how it feels. Yeah. Wait, so we were done filming, but... <laughs> Yeah, then we, we fixed the tuning key on this, a couple things earlier, tuned it up and we're letting it set. And I picked it up and went to tune it and I heard a little And when I talked about tapping on the guitar. Yep. Do it again. I don't think it's that though, because we had tension on that. <laughs> I think you might have a loose brace, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, it's just perfect timing. We're just talking about this. Is it though? Why? Why, why do I have? A, yeah. Why do I have a loose brace, Ben? Go ahead and tell the world. Well, because you didn't humidify your guitars properly. <laughs> God, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> Sharp fret ends on your guitars. Dude, it's bracing. Ah, that's brilliant. You know how hard I'm gonna get judged. Yep. On the comments for this. Yep. <laughs> 
I mean, look, dude, you moved, you pandemic, you're doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah, what other excuses can we come up with? Yeah, those, those, those sound like minimum. excuses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Start thinking about it. <laughs> think about it. It's funny, too, because we were like, oh, I wish we had an example of a loose brace. So originally this video was going to be about like, here's some things you should do to take care of your guitars. And um, it turns out I haven't been doing the things that you should do to take care of your guitars. So I guess do as I say, not as I do, or else you end up in this position. You end up like me in this position. I think it's this guy right here. I usually can't see anything unless it's really bad. Unless it's really bad, watch it be really bad. It's not really bad because it would be going. Okay. So it's not nothing. So what do I do? Um, go inside there with another extremely high tech specialized tool. It's, it's a cake knife <laughs> that's been sharpened really sharp. So I'll get in there, find. Uh, I know where it's at now, but I would go in there and look around so I could find where it was at. Then I'll put blue tape on either side of it and then I'll get glue underneath it and then I have this cool little scissor jack thing. And usually I'll use one of my wood clamps on the top to kind of give it a little leverage. Let it dry overnight, take the blue tape off, and you should be good to go. Okay. No problem. All right, but here's the, here's the moral of the story. Uh, a $20 humidifier from Walmart. Could, would have prevented all of this. Yeah. I had, I brought three guitars in today. Could have prevented all this. Yep. But we'll get you all squared away. So I hope that my bad decision making uh, helped you learn something here. Go get a humidifier, go get a humidity gauge, no matter where you live, and keep your space the proper humidity and temperature for your guitars. Even if you have just one solid body electric guitar, this stuff really matters. So uh, yeah, don't do what I did. Go get a humidifier. Huge thanks to Ben Calhoun and my friends over at Righteous Guitars for not only letting us go down and shoot there, but taking care of my guitars. If you're in the North Atlanta area, I highly recommend going to check them out. They're really, really great, and there's some actually cool stuff in there right now, like a late 90s uh, White Falcon that I actually played over on the Inner Circle that is phenomenal. Don't forget, you can sign up for the Inner Circle, link down below, 10 bucks a month will get you access to everything we've got going on over there, including early access to my new video course, the Rhythm Guitar Course that we're working on currently. And if you're interested in any of my other video courses, that's all linked down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Rhett Scholl, and remember, there is no plan B.